Hello, I'm Gregor Costa from New Zealand. I know that we share a lot in common, and in particular, uh, we share our love of rugby. Richie McCaw and his team of All Blacks uh, had a wonderful time at the Rugby World Cup 2015, and I know that they had a great game against the Welsh national team. But we have similarities as well. Our countries are of a similar size, and we have a similar population. And we also have similar problems in our healthcare delivery and in the socio-economic status and our drive towards health equity. I know that you are meeting to discuss prudent health and the principles and how Wales is getting it right. Congratulations on that initiative. I think it's a wonderful thing. Professor Sir Mansell Aylward and the members of the Bevan Commission uh, have developed the principles of prudent health and I think they're great. I would like to talk during this presentation about how we're applying the principles in New Zealand and maybe give some practical examples. Three years ago, the County's Manukau District Health Board set up an important initiative in localities. The county's locality as a whole has 508,000 people, including 23% who are Pacific, 21% Asian, and 17% Māori. We've considered how to deliver services better to this population of high needs, and the first of the prudent health principles applies. It says, achieve health and well-being with the public, patients, and professionals as equal partners. We considered best how to establish better health services, particularly for diabetics. We, with uh, using the principles of co-production, agreed that we would set up uh, governance with members of the public, consumers, diabetologists, diabetic nurse specialists, general practitioners, and some of the practice nurses. Through co-production, we've been able to design services that meet the needs of our diabetic clients. Recently, one of the diabetologists reported to me that they had done a series of around 100 patients and seen some dramatic changes in, in the care of the diabetics and in their blood sugars. The average HbA1c dropped by 21, and for those of you who know about diabetes, that's a massive drop. So uh, it does show that with co-production, patient engagement, we can achieve great results together. The second uh, prudent health principle that I want to talk about uh, says, care for those with the greatest health need first, making the most effective use of all skills and resources. This is a story about a Pacific community in South Auckland. <clears throat> we wanted to try and improve the health of the Pacific people. They usually have a number of disorders, including diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, strokes, renal disease, eye disease, and hypertension. And we, we figured that we needed to work in a different way rather than asking this community to come into clinics to get care. We were able to use some of the work uh, from Marshall Gans at Harvard University in community organization and engagement with communities to make a difference. So we discovered that the unit by which the Pacific people meet is actually through their churches and by engagement with pastors and with the community leaders, we were able to establish exercise programs, health education programs and others that have made a significant difference to the health and well-being of our Pacific people. The third prudent health principle is important too. Do only what is needed, no more, no less, and do no harm. This is a story of Bill English, 10,000 families, five cars up the driveway, and better social care. The Honourable Bill English, Minister of Finance in New Zealand, asks, asks the question, why is it in healthcare that we have five cars up the driveway at any one time? And he's right, he's making a good point. How can we make the best use of the resources that we have to deliver the right care at the right time to the right people in a timely way? So. In South Auckland here, we've developed a database of some 5,000 families who have high needs, needs around health, education, welfare, and housing. 
We've put in place housing initiatives to improve insula insulation so that houses are warmer, reduces the rate of transmission of disease and improves the health of the population. I think Bill English is right. We need to be thoughtful about the way we use our resources and develop new ideas and innovations to deliver health in a different way. The fourth prudent health principle says reduce inappropriate variation using evidence-based practice consistently and transparently. I'm going to approach this in a slightly different way because one of the things that I think is important to achieve this principle is actually having a workforce that can deliver the services in a new way. If you think about it, when we look forward to the next five or ten years, health is going to be delivered very differently. We've got the development of precision-driven health, new health technologies, new innovations, and we need a health workforce that can do this. In New Zealand, we've established Health Workforce New Zealand, a crown agency that's got a database of all the health workers across 27 health professions in New Zealand. We've done some forecasting as to what a health workforce should look like in the future, and now we're funding postgraduate education to deliver that future workforce prepared for the future. So my challenge to you is, thinking about the four prudent health principles, have you got the workforce that's going to be able to deliver what you need in the communities of the cities and the rural areas of Wales? Well, thank you for the privilege of being able to talk to you. I've really enjoyed the opportunity and thank you, Sir Mansell. Uh, I bring you greetings from New Zealand and best wishes. As they say in Māori, kia ora, kia ora tato. Greetings, greetings to you all. Thank you.